Gonna take a sentimental journey. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. The sentimental journey we'll be taking this morning is in search of Doris Day, whose cheery persona and gift for songs like Sentimental Journey made her one of our most beloved performers. So what accounts for her absence from the spotlight for so many years? Why, even now, at age 86, does she refuse requests for interviews? Jerry Bowen has some answers. Is it love that gave the suggestion? When life seemed so much simpler in America, a half century or so ago, Doris Day was America's sweetheart. The beloved girl next door, and a huge recording and movie star. Pillow talk, pillow talk. Doris Day is to this day the number one female box office star of all time. Nobody but me. She's the only one who was number one for four years in a row. That was never true of Elizabeth Taylor, Greta Garbo, Katherine Hepburn, of anyone else. In the 50s and 60s, it was hard to find a movie magazine without her beaming face on the cover. And her leading men came from the A-list of the day, says David Kaufman, author of the new unauthorized biography, Doris Day, the untold story of the girl next door. Well, famously, Rock Hudson, Cary Grant, James Cagney, Jimmy Stewart. Not to mention Frank Sinatra, Kirk Douglas, and Jack Lemmon. But Doris Day's reality, like that of that long ago America, was more complex and in some ways darker than the bubbly, everything's coming up roses public image. At the end of her career, she not only left Hollywood, she stopped being Doris Day. When I fall in For nearly 30 years now, she's lived near Carmel, California, an avid animal rights advocate nursing strays back to health on her small ranch. And she's known as Clara to most friends, a nickname given to her early in her career. She's rarely seen in public and rarely heard, except for one day each year, her birthday. And good afternoon, everybody. It's just after 3 o'clock. Kevin Call here. And on the phone, the birthday girl herself. Welcome back, Doris. Hi. Oh, Kevin, hi. When a local radio station plays the song she made famous, and Doris and her alter ego, Clara, call in to say thanks. You know what's fun? Uh, to hear uh, so many of the songs that I recorded so long ago and to hear them and I think, oh, that was a great song. I love that song. I love singing that song. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Her first big, huge hit was Sentimental Journey, which she recorded at the very end of the Second World War, it came out, and it became very popular for that reason with the, with the soldiers abroad who wanted to come home and with their wives here who wanted them home. It was 1939 when a 17-year-old Doris Kappelhoff of Cincinnati, Ohio, began her singing career with the big bands of that era. Her stage name became Day, and she was off on the ride of her life. But for all the success that would follow in song and film, she never found what she wanted most. The only thing she ever really wanted was to have a happy marriage and a happy family life. And it's the one thing she never had. She was married four times, but she was um, ultimately not happy in, with any of her, her husbands. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. By the time she'd won acclaim for her first film, Romance on the High Seas, in 1948, Day had been married and divorced twice and left with a baby boy. Her first husband beat her, her second abandoned her. At age 25, her search for Mr. Wright had gone very wrong. But her film career was taking off, and her films were giving a boost to her recordings. You say the sun begins. It's magic, which is in her first film, Romance on the High Seas. It's magic. And then after that, the next biggest song is Secret Love from Calamity Jane. Once I had a secret love. And after that comes Que Sera, Sera which ends up being the biggest of all. 
of her entire career. Okay, said I, said I, whatever will be, will be. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Cabaret singer Mary Claire Heron created a one-woman show dedicated to the songs of Doris Day. Gonna make a sentimental... She had a lovely lullaby quality in her voice, and I think everybody responds to that lullaby thing, and I think, you know, that's universal. Heron also wrote and produced a PBS documentary, Sentimental Journey, now 17 years old. It featured a rare interview in which Day reflected on her two decades of filmmaking, 39 films in all, and the one she liked most. Calamity Jane is probably my favorite movie because that's the real me. But when I was a little girl, I was a tomboy. I loved climbing trees and you know, skating and doing all the things that the boys did. Yet I loved dolls. Oh, Rex, what a lovely thing to say. But her most popular film may have been Pillow Talk, the first of three movies she did with Rock Hudson, when both stars were number one at the box office. Ah, oh, that's good. Their on-screen chemistry was matched by a lifelong off-screen friendship, founded in part, says biographer Kaufman, on the secret lives they shared, her troubled marriages, his homosexuality. And I think, without ever discussing it, that they could relate to being basically the opposite to what their images suggested. Everybody loves For example, the girl next door was not above having affairs, at least according to her alleged lovers, baseball players Maury Wills, which she denied, and Mickey Mantle, about which she was silent. Just like and behind the scenes for 17 years of her life was Marty, agent and husband number three, Marty Melcher. He tightly managed her career, and their marriage quickly became a business relationship. Doris made the money, and by accident or design, Marty squandered it all. When Melcher died, Doris learned her $23 million fortune was actually a $400,000 debt. The Doris Day Show, a situation comedy, saved her. It ran for five years on CBS and paid her legal bills as she fought her late husband's business partner to recover her losses. Eventually, she won some of it back. I just knew that justice would prevail. I've known it all along. By the early 70s, her career was largely over, her fourth marriage failing. And despite offers, she never took on another TV show until 1985 when she agreed to a small cable show devoted to pets. It was called Doris Day's Best Friends, and the appearance of her best friend was sad and shocking. We really had fun making movies. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah, I wish we'd made more. We should do it again. Yeah. Rock Hudson, gaunt and ghostly pale and gravely ill with AIDS, mm -hmm. an illness that opened the door on his secret, homosexuality. Hudson died two and a half months after appearing with Day and she began her retreat from the public eye. I can be happy, I can be sad. She looks like Doris Day, a little older, but Doris Day, she still looks great. Actress Kay Ballard, a longtime friend and occasional visitor at Day's Carmel Valley retreat. Well, she spends time making food for the animals. She, it's so funny, she has them on vegetarian, and you know, she really, she just adores her animals. I've been advertising and he ain't buying them. Andy, don't you touch that wig. Ballard was a regular on the old Doris Day show. This is a picture of Clara. She says her old friend doesn't always answer her phone calls, sometimes doesn't even answer the door. Most days, just wants to be left alone. I just think, the disappointment she's had in, in marriages is what turned her off of people and turned her to animals, and they never disappoint you. That sentimental Life may not have been perfect for the girl next door. There were quite a few bumps along the road. But for Doris Kappelhoff from Cincinnati, Ohio, it's been a pretty amazing journey.